Gabe and I'm Johnny. We're back with yet another theory of Zelda and today we'll talk about how every single Princess Zelda that ever existed might be suffering from a family curse. Scoured Sword showed us that the first Zelda was a mortal reincarnation of the goddess Hylia and at the ending Demise cursed her bloodline and those with the spirit of the hero to forever face another like him. Therefore, every Zelda is a descendant of the first and, consequently, has the blood of the goddess. This leads some to claim they are all highly reincarnate, but that's not necessarily true, as it's repeated many times that Hylia sacrificed herself to set the plane to end the mice in motion. So giving up an immortal life for infinite lives isn't much of a sacrifice. I believe only the original Zelda was actually a reincarnation, and therefore Hylia's last lifetime. Any subsequent princess was just a descendant, so much so that they all inherited magical powers, but none of Hylia's memories like the first one. The sacred blood may be a blessing, with all the powers and wisdom it appears to bring along, but at least when concerning the women of the royal family seems to be a curse as well. Three Zelda so far have lived for a very long time. The first one from Scoured Sword sealed herself for thousands of years to keep the seal on the mice active. A princess from ages past was placed on a sleeping curse until the hero from Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, managed to reawaken her with the full Triforce. And the latest one from Breath of the Wild used her powers to hold Calamity Ganon in place for 100 years. But all these Zeldas were kept the same age, in a sort of stasis by magic, during all that time and when being free from their task or curse, they apparently moved on with their lives. We've seen many Zeldas of many different ages, so it's safe to assume they would age normally as time progresses, like any other Hylian seems to have a regular human lifespan. But so far we've never, ever seen an old Zelda or an old woman in her family. That sleeping Zelda is the legendary reason for every Zelda being named Zelda. When her father died, the prince inherited the throne, but the late king did not think him or anyone else was worthy of the whole Triforce at the time, and hid parts of it telling this only to the princess. The prince, along with a magician who was close to the king, questioned Zelda about the Triforce, and she refused to comply. The magician, in anger, cast a sleeping spell on her and apparently died instantly as well, for reasons. The morning prince placed his sister on an altar in the palace and ordered every woman born in the royal family to be named Zelda from now on. Even if there were plenty of Zeldas before her, that was just an amazing coincidence. And I wonder if the same happened to most families in Hyrule since the same names keep popping up across the ages. It's true that we don't usually see many relatives of both Zelda and Link, but we had enough to put together in this theory and this will also link to how the royal family and the hero's family are probably more interconnected than usually believed. Zelda's fathers have been shown always as a grey bearded old man, but the closest thing we have to an older Zelda is when the princess from Spirit Tracks mentions how her grandmother played the spirit flute to her. But remember that this happened around 100 years after Phantom Hourglass, and she is stated to be the great-great-granddaughter of Tetra, giving plenty of Zeldas in a not so long span of time, with the current one being the only one alive. So if from Tetra to her, each of them lived around the same amount, they all died around 40 or less. Please check the math because I suck at it. The only other instances where Zelda's mother is mentioned is Tetra's mother, the Pirate Queen, and the Queen from Breath of the Wild, both said to have died tragically sudden and too soon, which is why Tetra became captain at such a young age, and the Princess of Calamity couldn't learn how to use her powers in time, and they are both mentioned in a way that doesn't seem as a result of an accident or enemy attack, but a sudden disease or natural cause. Now, following the spirit of the hero, the only time we heard of Link's mother is in Ocarina of Time, when the Great Deku Tree mentions she was dying and left her child under his protection. It is true that Link's father is never shown, but with some Links having blood of the Knights of Haru, it's usually assumed his father was a knight and died in battle. But we do see Link's uncle in A Link to the Past, although he doesn't look too old to confirm our suspicions, but the Link from the Minish Cap has an old grandfather, Smith. Gramps, from A Link Between Worlds, is most likely the previous hero, the one from A Link to the Past, who can test the strength of the new adventurer. And lastly, the Link from The Wind Waker, 
have an old grandma, which would break this bit of the theory apart if it wasn't such a major point of that game's story, pointing out that the Hero of Winds had absolutely no connections to the previous hero. Being from a different bloodline and therefore, his grandmother would not be victim of such curse, having a normal lifespan. Perhaps this divine power is much too powerful for a mortal body to contain naturally and brings unforeseen consequences to their holder. The Kings of Hyrule and the Heroes too, if they are also somewhat related, aren't able to fully access the magic of the divine bloodline. Instead, when possessing magical abilities, acquiring them from other lesser sources such as great fairies. With the sealing powers from the blood of the goddess being evident only among the women of the royal family, it feels ironic that they should be the ones fated to be short-lived. Well, that will be all for today, and thanks to you guys we finally reached 100 subscribers. So now our channel link is actually our channel name, and not just our bunch of random characters. And our Theory of Zelda video about all the Zelda maps has reached over 2000 views. Thanks so much, we will do our best to keep making more and more videos. And as always, if you enjoyed, please remember to give this video a like and consider subscribing to our channel. And if you want to see more, you can click here to see our last video of Zelda, in which we talked about the main uses of the Time Shift Stones from Skyward Sword. See you next time. Bye!